our chief product officer, Nate Stewart, to stage to have a quick commercial about Cockroach Labs. Thank you, everybody. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Nate Stewart, the chief product officer at Cockroach Labs. And I want to share a couple exciting updates from CockroachDB. So first, let's talk about what we're actually building here. CockroachDB, it's a distributed SQL database. It's a database that scales horizontally without giving up transactions. And it was built uh, from the ground up to run natively in public cloud environments, public cloud environments, hybrid environments. Wherever your workloads are, that's where CockroachDB can run. And over the last couple years, we've seen tremendous adoption from our customers. We've helped Nubank, one of the largest fintech companies in Latin America, power their credit card authorization. We've helped Bose, a consumer electronics company, power their uh, cloud-connected audio uh, devices platform. And we've also helped one of the leading telecom companies completely rebuild their uh, customer service um, backend to run uh, in a hybrid cloud so it can survive a regional failure and it can keep data physically close to users so they all have a great experience. And in supporting these customers and in supporting these cloud-native workloads, um, we've learned a couple things with our customers that really help us figure out where do we go from here. And there, there are two themes that have come up, and there are two themes that I think about often. And the first is around how can we deliver instant customer experiences? How can we deliver those great customer experiences that keep users coming back? And the other thing is developer productivity. There's more demand for software than ever before, but there are not enough developers to keep up with that demand, especially as we're trying to build, again, these cutting-edge experiences. How can CockroachDB help? So first, let's talk about instant customer experiences. This is one of my favorite topics. There's this idea of the 100 millisecond rule. Has, has anyone heard of this? It was, um, it's coined by the creator of Gmail, and it's a mandate that says all of your interactions, all of your client-facing or customer-facing interactions have to respond in less than 100 milliseconds. Where does that number come from? 100 milliseconds is the threshold for a human to perceive an interaction as instantaneous. If you can deliver on the 100 millisecond rule, you can have instantaneous applications. And let's think about how that plays in the real world with the, the public cloud. Today, if you run a relational database, it's going to be running in a, a single region, right? You have your, your big primary machine that's handling all your SQL, and if your latencies start getting too high, you can always buy your bigger and bigger machine. What's the problem with that? Well, obviously, the, the costs scale exponentially, but whatever, we can, we can worry about or we can lean on Moore's Law to, to keep the costs in line. But what happens when your users aren't close to that data center? What happens when your users span the United States or span the world? Now you can't rely on Moore's Law to uh, increase the clock speed because now you're stuck with the speed of light, right? You're not, you're not going to make that any faster. In a world like that, every round trip is precious. Every time you have to go from your client to your database and back, that is something that you just you can't avoid. So you have to figure out ways to get your data physically close to your users. But one of the challenges we've had with uh, CockroachDB is figuring out how can we support um, data integrity while minimizing the number of round trips. And we made a lot of progress here over the last couple of years, but we still had too many round trips. That we still were not doing what was the theoretical minimum. And we, we couldn't figure out for a long time. This was uh, really bumping into the frontiers of computer science research. But over the last six months, our, our team figured it out. We figured out how to do a transaction that would ensure your data is consistent, no matter where it's accessed, in a single round trip. That cuts your latency in half. That delivers great uh, customer experiences, no matter where in the world your customers are. That's one of the exciting updates we have in CockroachDB 19.2. Next, developer productivity. How can you make your developers as productive as possible? How can you respond to changing customer demands, changing customer requirements? And how can you do this in multi-region environments, in these distributed environments? Now, if you're familiar with uh, NoSQL databases, you know that working with eventual consistency or working with incorrect data or inconsistent data, that puts a lot of burden on the developer. You have to do all these workarounds, all these retries. You have to figure out when is this system actually going to tie out. Well, this is something we solved pretty early on with CockroachDB by supporting those distributed transactions. But we were still 
exposing too much complexity to the, the application developers. We still made them think too much about where in the world their data resides. And so the other big thing that I want to talk about for our newest release, CockroachDB 19.2, is how we're taking a lot of the heavy lifting and we're removing it from the application layer and bringing it down into the database. And to do that, we've had to rely on uh, several things, but the one I want to talk about is our cost-based optimizer. So the way an optimizer works in a database is it takes your query, it looks at thousands or maybe even millions of ways to execute it, and then tries to pick the plan that has the lowest cost or, or the best performance. And if you look at a database like Oracle or, or Postgres, um, they use different techniques, but they're all based around the, the structure of the data in the table. How many rows are in the data? What are statistics around the, the data in a particular table? But they're missing something critically important for multi-cloud deployments. They're missing something critically important for distributed um, deployments. And that's taking into account where in the world your data is. It's taking into account where in what regions does this data reside. And so what we've done is we've reimagined the, the cost-based optimizer to take into account the location of the data and use that to come up with better plans and use that to come up with better ways to execute your queries. So developers don't have to spend as much time focusing on, oh, is my data in this data center or that data center? The optimizer can figure it out and the developer can focus on building great applications. And this is just a small sample of some of the updates we have on CockroachDB 19.2. We've improved our SQL surface area. We've improved our performance. We've made multi-region uh, much easier. We've made multi-cloud easier. And this is launching on um, November 4th. But there's one more update I want to talk about. Um, going back to the theme of developer productivity. How can we make it so developers don't have to worry about operating the database? And with this, I want to talk about Cockroach Cloud. So about a year ago, we released our, our managed service, service offering. And what that meant was if you were a developer, if you were an architect, you could call the Cockroach Lab sales team. Um, we'd pick up the phone, we'd talk about your requirements, and then we'd spin up a CockroachDB cluster for you. It could be in a single data center, it could span the world. And with that, our uh, site reliability engineers would keep the cu uh, cluster up and running. But the issue with that is that while it offloaded a lot of the operational burden, it just takes too long. Developers don't want to talk to a salesperson. They just want to give us a credit card and they want a connection string. End of transaction. And so I want to demo uh, Cockroach Cloud. So this is the first time that we're going to show uh, this feature. So if we could just switch over to the uh, demo, I'll walk you through how this works. So what we're looking at is your standard create uh, database form. This is how you're going to provision a new cluster in uh, Cockroach Cloud. I've already created an organization, I've already created a username, but I just want to show you the experience of creating a distributed SQL database, a scale out SQL database. It's a multi-cloud conference, so of course I have to talk about how we can run across multiple clouds. If your application tier is in Google, we can run in Google. If your application tier is in Amazon, we can run in Amazon. And we're gonna continue adding uh, clouds in the, the coming months and years. So what we're gonna do is we'll pick Google, and then of course we can choose um, one of the different regions in uh, Google's environment. So we'll choose uh, North Virginia. The, the next thing we're gonna do is say, hey, how many nodes do we want? How many processes or servers do we want to handle uh, customer traffic? In this case, we'll just create a, a seven node cluster. Now, this page may feel pretty sparse, but what's really important is that not, not what's on the page, but what's not on the page. What you're not seeing us is us asking you about where do you want your primary node? Do you want failovers? Do you want um, or, uh, tables or... Um, you know, read replication, asynchronous replication, those are things that you'd see in a traditional relational database uh, as a service, but that's not what we're asking you here. CockroachDB is a cloud-native database. All of the servers in CockroachDB are exactly the same. You can send read or write traffic to any node, and they can all participate in serving your customers. So if you want more capacity, you just add more commodity nodes. If one of those nodes goes down, no problem. There's no issue. There's no downtime. If you want to upgrade those nodes, we can do a rolling upgrade. You need to take your applications offline with Cockroach Cloud. So we have our seven-node cluster. We're going to choose our commodity hardware, and then just a simple name, not much to see here. And that's it. 
With that, we've provisioned a multi-node cluster that can scale horizontally, it can survive machine failures, it can survive availability zone failures. You never have to take off, uh, your applications offline. And best of all, once you wanna go beyond a single region, if you wanna keep your data physically close to your users, no matter where they are in the country, no matter where they are in the world, you can do that with Cockroach Cloud. So with that, I'll turn it over to the, uh, go back to the demo, or to the main slide. So Cockroach Cloud is available for sign up today. I encourage you and your application developer teams to uh, sign up and check it out. Thanks so much.